And despite having huge debt cancellation, a decade ago, Ghana still loses almost 30% of its annual revenue to payments on its external debt alone and is currently under a 17th IMF program hoping to salvage an age-old economic problem, debt crisis. In our latest hotline documentary, Joy News' Isaac Ofoyeji takes us on a historical ride tracking Ghana's over six decades of ballooning public debt. described as not credit worthy. No, no creditors will continue to give us uh, credit lines to, to run the business of government for the nation. And since we had only four years to prove that we could govern, uh, we, we might be worse off than what we inherited. So we decided to go the hippie way. And it worked. Ghana was the second biggest beneficiary of debt relief literally in the world, though this is a list of African countries, in terms of the proportion of your GDP and as a proportion of how much debt that was you know, forgiven, Ghana was number two on the, on, on the list of African countries at least. So you see that we have huge benefits from HIPIC, more than uh, $6 billion of money was freed up uh, for us. The borrowing came a vicious cycle and Ghana couldn't escape the trap even after debt forgiveness. Ghana discovered oil, and by 2011, the country had started producing and exporting its first barrels of crude oil. I do not want Ghanaians to think that the oil discovery is the end of everything. That is the end of the journey. If anything, it's the beginning of the journey. We want to make sure that we derive the maximum benefit from the oil, but that should not take away attention from the other very important areas, agriculture. No nation can flourish without a strong agricultural base. In January 2011, Ghana was said to become the fastest growing economy in sub-Saharan Africa, as projected by the World Bank, with an end period growth rate of 13.4%. Indeed, Ghana ended 2011 with a growth rate of 14%. By 2015, Ghana's economy was in trouble, hobbled by widening current account and budget deficits, rampant inflation, and a depreciating currency. Credit dried up as interest rates rose and banks' bad loans piled up. Precisely because the structure of the economy explains a lot of the things that you see at the macro level and even at the micro level. So that is fine because essentially we, are, we don't add margins to the uh, primary commodities and look the world thrives on margins to the extent that you are not adding margins you are not getting value and therefore you don't command price in the market after several considerations ghana was back to the imf seeking a fresh bailout this was our 16th but by the time we went to sinchi and uh, look at the policies and the rest we realized you know that it was going to be difficult and then as you know, was a case. The development partners also decided that, you know, they didn't think we could handle this, this problem ourselves. Uh, they look to the IMF, which is a lender of last resort. It will be the last time we will have to go to the IMF again for any such program. This will be the IMF program to end all programs. One target of Ghana's 16th IMF program was to help restore our debt burden to sustainable levels. The 16th IMF program actually failed on one of its objectives, which was to substantially bring down debt. So the 16th IMF program really did not do much in terms of uh, bringing Ghana's debt to a sustainable level. A nation that begs airs on the Joy News channel later tonight at 8.30 p.m.